three, two, one. You ready? You're listening to the Real Pineapple Podcast Network. Everybody, thank you so much for listening. This is the real pineapple. This is your humble host hunter here. Hope you guys are having a great weekend. Um, I've got a review here for the f- official main trailer for Wonder Woman 1984, which of course is directed by um, Patty Jenkins. Stars uh, Gal Gadot once again as a uh, as Diana, aka Wonder Woman, brings back Steve Trevor played by Chris Pine, and adds uh, Maxwell Lord, of course, played by Pedro Pascal, who we do not deserve, and uh, Kristen, uh, Kristen Wiig, who will make her debut in the franchise as Cheetah. So, okay, if you guys remember, I liked the first trailer for Wonder Woman. Didn't love it, thought it was all right. I was like, eh, I think I gave it a B or a B plus. I was just like, eh, all right. This trailer, I've got to say, I like infinitely more. I still have some issues, uh, or not even issues, I would say concerns. Slight concerns. But, because uh, I always say, sequelitis is a thing. I'm going to have the same concerns, probably about Black Panther 2. But um, I want to go ahead and just talk um, talk my way through the trailer here. So, a couple things I noticed. Um, first off, and this is at the very end of the trailer, but I'm going to jump around because it's my podcast um so we get another look of the golden eagle armor i love the fact that one of the last shots of the trailer is her taking the wings off one of those things in dc comics that's always been kind of like not specifically defined too often is if wonder woman can fly because sometimes it seems like she can sometimes she can't so I'm going to guess that the wings there are going to be something for her to glide on to go ahead and meet Cheetah for their final battle because this clearly looks uh, like the third act. I doubt she'd be wearing the golden ar- uh, the golden uh, eagle armor, you know, in Act Two. This seems like the climax. And one thing I will say about this movie, um, I think this is going to get pushed back. To, uh, I think this film will get pushed back. To push back, good grief, um, again, to next year, because something I wasn't aware of, next year is Wonder Woman's uh, 80th uh, anniversary, and I think to coincide with that, it would seem a little odd to put the film out on the 79th anniversary, I feel like they will probably delay this, I'm gonna say until March or April, because if you guys remember, or if you're hearing the rumors, which we didn't get confirmation of today, we didn't get a release date for Zack Snyder's uh, Justice League. I think what's going to happen is that the supposed spot that many people, myself included, thought that that film would fall into, or that miniseries would fall into, March or April, I think they're going to go ahead and put Wonder Woman 84 in that spot and then delay... Uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League probably until I'm gonna say the early fall probably say like I'll say like September ish I think is what's gonna end up happening um but back to the trailer here I love the fact that the film itself opens up with uh, or the uh, trailer itself opens up with the whole uh the whole games that Amazonian games it's really a, a very great visual to see a young Diana running and then you cut to DC and she's running down someone or chasing someone. I would assume it might be Cheetah, but uh, I I love that. I, I love that contrast in where Diana began her journey to where she is now. Um, clearly not done for journey, but I, I, I just love that, uh, that visual. Um, another thing I've got to say, too, and this is at the beginning of the trailer, I gave the first trailer a lot of crap for that Ride the Lightning moment because I thought it looked, um, to be honest, I thought it looked like ass. I thought it looked absolutely terrible. Here, because you're not getting just one 
like small frame of it, you're getting a little bit of the sequence. It looks incredible in this trailer. I was like, okay, like I want to see that in IMAX. I want to see that on a big screen. Um, I loved uh, the way that looks. Um, now I I'm gonna kind of bounce around here a little bit because I want to talk about the Wonder Woman. Uh, well, the Wonder Woman eighty four panel. So first off, I can only hope and pray that Chris Pine's performance on this panel does not translate to the film because <laughs> Chris Pine I know a lot of people like him I I'd love to have a drink with him he just seems like fun but he could not be bothered to engage on this fucking panel he seemed so fucking bored uh, which was honestly as a fan it was pretty irritating to see him just look so um not like really dismissive like oh I have to do this right now I'm sorry do you have a Star Trek film to go film <laughs> I don't think you do, so you should be happy that they're bringing you back for the sequel. Uh, Gal Gadot, I have to say, I, I, I know she hasn't been really in, uh, outside of like the two Fast and Furious movies, which, I mean, if you want to count those as movies, sure. Uh, but she really hasn't been in anything outside of Wonder Woman, where she, she hasn't been in anything outside of this that's shown that she's a star. But the thing about Gal Gadot is that while she does not look like Wonder Woman, and I've made my thoughts and feelings on that clear she really does capture the spirit of the character and even on this panel which you know i don't know when they tape this but just seeing her so happy and energized and just really humble for the opportunity that she's been given by dc it really makes me want to root for her and want this film to do well uh patty jenkins i think out of maybe everyone at fandom came across the best she just came across so genuine and so positive and she brings this very natural energy uh to the room whenever she's in it and i just love seeing her talk about this film because this clearly means so much to her um the other the, the main star for me outside of one person that i'll get to was uh, pedro pascal of course the mandalorian himself we do not deserve pedro pascal and he is just a wonderful wonderful human being and seeing him as maxwell lord first off i love the way they're playing up the 80s uh aesthetic even seeing you know the uh like the neon uh the neon colors if you haven't seen that new wonder woman 84 poster please check that out it is beautiful but even cutting uh at the 33 second mark you see all those old school uh televisions like in the in the like the pastel type colors um, the thing that's going to be very interesting for me is that they show a lot of stuff in the White House. Ha so does he use a wish to become president or I I'm just very, I'm very curious how they're going to go ahead. Uh, I'm going to go uh, in. I I'm very curious how they're going to go ahead and establish that. Something that I think this trailer does a very good job of is showing you stuff that's clearly near the end of the movie or like a big part of the third act but not showing you the consequence because there is that part where maxwell lord uh his powers have are at the point they're threatening everywhere they're threatening the globe um if you guys know a little bit about wonder woman i'm gonna try to dance around this but if you notice in the first trailer there was that stone those crystals he was looking at um my nerdy self knows that that's the Dreamstone, which allows uh, him to go ahead and grant wishes to anyone. But because the Dreamstone was created uh, by the God of Lies, it's a big old trap. And so there's always a catch to every uh, wish or that's granted. And so, of course, you know, I, I would theorize that, you know, of course, Diana wants Steve back at some point. She'll probably have to destroy the stone, and so Steve will go away, and that will be her moving on. That's, I mean, if I'm a betting man, that's what I would bet on. But I love the terror it seems like he's bringing, and I love the way that this trailer focuses on what everyone uh, in particular wants. Uh, Barbara, who's played by Kristen Wiig, she says that she wants to go ahead and be uh, an apex uh, predator uh what's an apex predator oh a cheetah go figure i uh the clothing and even her look even down to the glasses it's very reminiscent of selena kyle in batman returns 
and that arc works so well for me in that film. So if they can even get close to that in this film, it's going to be, I, I think one of my bigger fears is Cheetah and how they're going to go ahead and establish her. Because, I mean, yes, there were technically two villains in Wonder Woman 84, but or in uh, the original Wonder Woman, but they didn't have to juggle them nearly as much as I think they're going to have to juggle them here. So that, that is admittedly a concern that I have. But I still think that, you know, it's Patty Jenkins. I really have no reason to not think that she can pull this off. Um, there's a line that Steve drops where he goes, Diana, like, it's like one day hasn't passed. And it's that shot of Diana getting out of the car. and She's in that white dress. And first off, Gal Gadot, those legs, though. Oh, my God. Uh, secondly, he's right, because Wonder Woman ages very slowly. And I appreciate that, you know, if you, even if you don't know anything about the character, that, you know, you'll go, oh, all right, fair enough. I love the contrast, too, of Diana walking out and getting flash bulbs and Barbara walking out. And Kristen Wiig, make no mistake, Kristen Wiig is absolutely gorgeous. Do not misunderstand. But I love the way they're playing her character. You know she's not wearing the glasses at that point. Um, she's not wearing her glasses, and, you know, the, the flash bulbs aren't going off for her. So that's just adding more uh, to, to Diana's, uh, or to her envy uh, towards Diana. Um, I love the fact, too, that she's, I don't know if, I, I'm very curious if her wanting to be an apex predator that somehow is messing for brain chemistry or if it's just she's just becoming jealous, but she, you know, talks about how Diana was handed everything while people like me have had nothing. I, I, I love that, I love that envy that comes through in that line. I, I think that's a great line. Um, Again, getting back to the White House, I'm really curious how this all kind of works because there's that point where when a woman is down, Barbara walks uh, right in front of her. And so I like the hints of the of the cheetah character. The, uh, the shot at the 1 minute 14 mark where Barbara's in cheetah type attire, like, like tall boots and this like cheetah jacket. Wonder Woman, of course, is in her Wonder Woman outfit. Um... I love how Barbara runs towards... So, here's, here is a gripe, I will say. There's this... So, she jumps, like, a couple hundred feet, <laughs> it feels like, and does this almost, like, spinning attack, something out of Mortal Kombat. I would have... I wish that she, that she would have hit the ground and then made that jump and hit Diana. I know that's nitpicky, but just... Uh, my concern about this movie is that the action between Gal uh, and a Christian Wig is going to come across Batman and Robin-ish. Like it's going to be a lot of wire work and that there's aren't, there, there aren't, there isn't weight to the hits. Th that, that is my concern. That is probably my biggest concern after watching the trailer because I understand these are superheroes and, you know, Wonder Woman's able to, you know, like has an invisible plane and a magic lasso and all that. I get that. But just having her, her, jump so far uh cheetah especially when it seems like she's very much in the beginning stages of having her powers it, it, it's a little it's a little hard to buy that but i digress there is this shot and we've seen it we saw it in the in the first trailer uh at least a glimpse of it the shot at the minute 20 mark i think might be the best shot in the whole trailer where gal has jumped on uh has knocked that tank uh, into the air, and what I love about this is because it's a direct callback to the first film. Because when Wonder Woman was doing all of her, you know, badass shit uh, against Ares, uh, Steve Trevor was already dead by that point. So it cutting to him and him looking back with this look of pun intended wonder, it actually makes sense. And I appreciate uh, something. You know, that's something that most people probably won't even think twice about. I appreciate the fact that they threw that in there. Um, I have been trying to slow down. So there's this, uh, there's a part here that I also love that, uh, where Barbara throws this guy against a van and, or uh, against a truck. And, you know, she says, you know, I've never been one for rules. Uh, oh, oh sorry. That, that Maxwell Lord says, I've never been one for rules. Uh, and they're together, they're talking together. So it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how that relationship works out. 
What I am intrigued by, too, is at the minute 31 mark, Gal has her lasso, or Wonder Woman has her lasso around something. And I have no idea what the hell it is. I've slowed it down multiple times trying to figure out what it is. And I don't know what it is. So I'm actually going to have to wait until uh, the movie for that. Uh, at the minute 44, uh, I think the minute 44 mark, uh, for minute 46 mark, this shot of Maxwell Lord with his hand out and everything spinning around him. Uh, he's turned the White House into chaos, uh, much like our current president. And I'm very curious how that's going to go ahead and materialize and, again, how he got there. And, of course, we get to the last shot here, so or, or the end of the trailer. So I love the way Cheetah looks in the body. I'm a little concerned about the face just because the last time I remember a fight scene being this dark, it was uh, Terminator Salva and not Terminator Salvation, Terminator Dark Fate. Um, I have no doubt this movie will be better than Dark Fate, but I am a little concerned about how that's filmed because I, you can see what's happening, but it is a little dark. So I, I, I hope the whole fight scene doesn't take place in darkness like this. I, I just don't think it would make sense for it to be like that. Uh, looking at Cheetah's body, um, I love the way it looks. I think it looks really cool. The face, it looks like a like a little bit of CG. Patty Jenkins, I know, said that they use mostly practical effects, but come on now. I like the way the face looks when I have it pause. I don't know how the facial reactions and stuff are going to be in live action, like in motion. So I, I would I would have liked to have seen. A little bit more of that. It almost felt like the trailer, honestly, was kind of trying to hold that back. I don't know if they're still working on the effects. Lord, you know, they probably are. So, I, you know, I get that. But, I, yeah. So, I'm a little worried about that. I like the way Cheetah moves. But, again, even just a little bit I'm seeing from this this fight scene, I'm, I'm not in love with the lack of weight on the punches on the throws. So, I, I, I hope they that's tweaked a little bit and that's not the whole that's not how it is for the whole film but you get that great shot at the 205 mark where wonder woman goes ahead and drops the uh, the wings and she's just in the golden eagle armor wingless and it really feels like that's her going okay like i try to do this you know the quote nice way like let's go i i appreciate that i <sighs> And I like the new logo, too. Like, it's the same logo, but it's just not with the neon. It's, like, just the gold, like the golden eagle armor. I really like that. I almost wish, I really actually wish the trailer would have stopped there and not added the kind of little stinger with the with the joke uh, with Steve trying to pick out an outfit. Just because you already got a little humor of him uh, with, the, with the jet. Uh, and you got some interaction with them in the trailer. I don't think this part was necessary. I actually would have ended it with uh, with the Golden Eagle uh, armor reveal or re-reveal. I would have ended it there. I don't think they needed this little thing at the end. But again, that's that's just me, my personal preference. Uh, I personally would give this trailer a solid A. I really enjoyed this, and it gets me more excited for uh, for the film. Uh, it's supposed to come out in October. Um, if you want to see this, wear a mask so we can go ahead and actually see this on time. But this is something I'm definitely going to check out, you know, whenever I get a chance to, when things of Lord willing calm down. But I'm really excited for this. This looks good. Um, and I, I, I got to shout out one last quick thing. During the panel, they brought on uh, Linda Carter, of course, uh, the woman who first played Wonder Woman in uh, the Wonder Woman TV show. I love what Patty Jenkins said uh, to Linda Carter about her. And it was very cute to see Kristen Wiig have a genuine fangirl moment and freak out because Linda Carter was a surprise. Like, everyone was kind of surprised. And Kristen Wiig freaked out. And I thought it was a very genuinely sweet moment to see her have that kind of, you know, that reaction that, she's going to be getting from a lot of kids moving forward uh, since she's playing Cheetah. I love what Patty Jenkins had to say about the fact that it's not about like replacing her as Wonder Woman. It's about passing the torch. Yes, Patty Jenkins literally said passing the torch, which I 
<laughs> I definitely laughed at. I was like, that's a little on the nose. But honestly, though, it's true because this this character means so much to people. It means so much to young girls and just really everyone. So I understand the I, I can't even imagine the amount of pressure that Patty Jenkins is under to go two for two with this. And before people kind of freak out, I understand. Yes, sequelitis is a thing. She did direct Monster. She led Charlie Stern. She directed Charlie Stern to a freaking Oscar, which people forget about. I, I think this film is in safe hands with Patty Jenkins. As long as the script is good, I have no concerns really about the direction at all. So, um, interesting thing about this trailer too, as it, as it ends, there is no release date. It just says experience it in, uh, only in theaters, experience it in IMAX. So this might, I, I stand by it. I think this is going to get pushed back to next year to coincide with the 80th anniversary of Wonder Woman. Um, so yeah, whenever we get to see this, I'm excited to see it. I think we'll probably get one more trailer at some point. Um, I'm not really sure when, but uh, I think we'll get a release date at the next, I guess, part two of Fandom, which is in like three weeks. I think we'll get it there. So, but everybody, Wonder Woman 84, the official main trailer. What did you think? Let us know what you thought in the comments below. You can go ahead and like us on Facebook at The Real Pineapple. You can follow yours truly on the Twitter at J Hunter Real Pineapple. You can follow Scott on Twitter at Nearman the First and go ahead and like share and subscribe you can go ahead and find us on apple and google podcasts podbean stitcher and iHeartRadio, uh tune up and uh spotify and soundcloud at the real pineapple um guys thank you so much for listening uh we will have reviews up uh this upcoming week for uh, central park season one we'll have a review up for summerland have a review up as well for uh, Borat, which I just rewatched, and I've got a lot to say about that. And I will have a full breakdown of all the stuff I enjoyed at DC Fandom here in the next uh, uh, day or so for you guys. But please stay safe out there, wear a mask, take care of each other. If you're on the West Coast, uh, please be careful of all the fires going on. Um, love you guys, stay safe out there, and we'll talk to you soon.